Okay, Matthew chapter 19, <clears throat> verse 13. Then were they brought unto him little children. Now, when you run the cross references in the other Gospels, because I was in a church, you know, the little children, suffer little children, hold the little children. You run that reference, we'll, we'll come across it. Oh, well, things will be changing very soon in this family. But uh, I don't know what happened with me, but with the Bible study. But when you run those references in the other Gospels, that little children comes to infants, babies. Now, he should put his hands on them, the laying of hands on the children and pray. So he puts his hand on the children and he prays for them. And the disciples rebuke them. The disciples can't get along with nobody. Get rid of them. There's too many here. Get rid of them. There's too many. Come on, man. You know, can't we have a break? And I hear they're coming up with the children crying, screaming, spitting. Oh, come on. Get those snots. That kid's got snots over his head. You don't want him to be with Jesus. And there they are. But Jesus said, suffer little children. Again, when you run that cross-reference, verse 13, it's infants. And there are some churches that, I've done it with, with my daughter, there are some churches you bring your, your, do, your child, your infant, up to the church, and you, you don't lay hands, you, you dedicate them to the Lord. In other words, I'm taking this child, I am giving this child over to the Lord, and the devil's going to fight. I know my jury of the other parents that did that, or worldly and, and carnal Christians. And their children turn out everything but. And the thing is, all right, in order to do a baby dedication, you got to make sure those parents are living dedicated to the Lord themselves. I mean, that's like taking spoiled milk, pour it in your cereal. Well, gee, why does my cereal taste terrible? Because you had sour milk. And you can't take sour milk and put it in Captain Crunch and say, oh, this is going to taste good. That's just as bad as a, as a woman or a man. They will find a spouse that's not saved. Oh, they'll get better when we get married. Oh, no, they won't. So after the little children and forbid them not. Okay, I, I wonder if that's Peter there. They're trying to stop the parents from bringing these children to Jesus. The public school system, the government, will forbid you to bring your children to Jesus and God because the public schools don't teach creation. They don't teach God the Father, Jehovah, Jesus Christ. They'll teach you any other God. They'll teach you yoga. They'll teach you uh, yoga. They'll teach you yoga. They'll teach you Mohammedism. And in California schools, you got that prayer mat and you're facing towards Mecca. Oh, you got belly dancing women in the churches, and you got this, you know, uh, oh, shoot, what, why is it every time I think of a word, it comes to my tongue and falls out? Uh, drag queens in the public school system. You got the Native American worship. You got the European worship. You got the Roman Catholic worship. You got the great worship of science and the great how the men are and Martin Luther King and holy hallelujah, but no God, no Jesus Christ, and no prayer, and no Bible. That's the world saying, don't you raise that child for Jesus. You you just hand those little children over to me. And if they're boys, we'll throw them in the river. They're girls, I can just imagine what we do with them. And if you know, just get children under three years old, just kill them. Like any child in the womb, three months old, just kill them. To come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is the birds, the you know, the bushes, the ants. So, in the millennium, it's going to be like childlike. Really, not going to be any cares. It's completely trusting in the Father in Jesus Christ. And He laid His hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him. Good master, 
What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus sent him, he said unto him, Believe on me, and thou shalt be saved in the house. Did I get a Baptist version there? I think I got a, a Baptist church version because everywhere for salvation is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter where you are, I even had a, a church where the pastor said, you know, Daniel and all the Old Testament saints were Christians. You want to know something? Most of your saints are in the Old Testament. Christians are in the New Testament. There are no Christians before Acts. I forget what chapter it is. They were first called Christians at Antioch. Antioch is where our Bible came from. So, he says, what must I do to get eternal life? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Problem. Jesus is speaking. Jesus had not died and not been buried and now rose again from the dead. We are what I call in the dispensation of the gospel between the law and grace. I don't know what goes on here, but there's the law. He says, why callest thou me good? There is none There is none good but one, that is God. Okay? Now the Jehovah Witnesses will use this verse. When you say Jesus is God, well, you know, that rich run ruler showed up to Jesus. He said, you know, good master, and Jesus rebuked him for saying good. So see, he's not God, because he said there's only but one that is good, and that's God. Yeah. Okay. There's no problem. The nation of Israel and this rich young ruler didn't believe in Jesus, and he didn't believe in God. So Jesus lays the foundation in the period that he is now in. All right, let, let, let's go. Hold, let's get a hold of God first. Hebrews says you got to have faith in God. You got to believe God is. Jesus nails it down. Listen, before you talk about me, Jesus, you got to get to the Father. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. No, no, no Christian of a Baptist church is told to keep the commandments. Paul rebukes one of the churches, I forget which one it is. See, Philippians, Colossians, uh, uh, one of those four books there. Because they wanted to go back to the law. And you got to be careful too because you know <laughs> the Baptist church goes back to the law too. You know, that which way pertains to man shall you not wear and what pertains to woman. Not. Okay, uh, the problem is, you know, in the Old Testament they wore girdles. Men. Uh, Jesus' disciples carried purses. Okay. You're not wearing a robe. And I would not want my daughter, <clears throat> if we go to a Baptist fellowship and outside, I wouldn't want my daughter to be running around playing baseball, soccer, anything like that in a dress. That's indecent. But that's what the law says. Now, not that I'm for tattoos or anything, but the, the forbidden of the tattoo is under the law. And there are preachers of oh, no, adultery. Any, no, anybody who committed adultery and anybody who, who, who murdered anybody had to be put to death. Uh, excuse me, church A says if we confess our sins, uh, there is no law. Now, we're to do that is right, but for salvation... He says, keep the commandments. Because he said, what must I do in eternal life? He said, hey, you want eternal life? Keep the commandments. That's not today. That's not this side of Calvary. And if you do come across somebody, a church, that says, keep the commandments for salvation, you will die and go to hell. And you will burn in hell being a good little duber. He says unto him, which? Okay. 
He knows what the commandments are. He's like, okay, where's the loophole? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Okay, yep. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Come on, he's a rich young youth. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 20, Whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with him. You mean this guy has never, never looked at a woman. He's never thought about killing anybody. Thou shalt not steal. You never had to, you know, think about taking something that's not yours. You never had that thought? Thou shalt not bear false witness, shall never lie. Honor thy father and mother. You a perfect child. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And a young man said unto him, All these I have kept from my youth, and which lack I yet. Now, before you say that's impossible, you got to remember Job, before the law, he was upright. He was, even the devil was, the devil goes up before God and let me at him. Because the devil says you blessed him, you protected him, you put a hedge about him. He's just doing so wonderful and great. Just remove one part of that hedge and I'll, I'll have him. John the Baptist's father, who always forget his name, the Bible says about him, he did that was right. He was just. The Bible says about Noah, he was just in a wicked, violent world. And Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect. Now he does not rebuke him. When he said, I have kept all these from my youth up. Paul makes that claim. And there are some that preach, and I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't know. There are some people say that this is Paul right here. Because Paul did keep the law. Paul was rich. He was a Pharisee. Pharisees were the strict of the strict of the strictest of the strict sect. Man, they, they would weigh out their tithes. They would wash their hands. They would go so far in the Sabbath. And there's a quite possibility that this is Paul. I won't put it down doctrinally, but if that will be perfect. So Jesus backs up what the guy said. Problem. Problem. If that will be perfect, go, pay attention to the word go in the Bible, and sell that thou hast. Remember, he's rich. Give to the poor. You see the Catholics there? You see Catholics in their charity? You see the Salvation Army today in their charity? We give them Thanksgiving meal. You know, for a dollar, we'll give them a shower in Daytona Beach. And, we'll, you know, we'll get clothes and all that. And, if, you know, if we let you out at the parking lot, you know, we, we get certain years off purgatory. And, you know, if we give to you the, the, the main charity organizations and we donate our time, we got... You know, they got the soup kitchens just as much as the Baptists and all that. But they're doing it. They are doing it for salvation. Most of your Baptists, I didn't say all, most of your Baptists will have a soup kitchen to get the gospel reached to them before they feed them. But there are organizations in this world today, oh, we're going to take care of the poor. They're doing it because they think before God, and they got scripture, Matthew 19, 21, out of context. That, oh, so see, if I, if I do good, if I take care of the poor people, I will get eternal life. That comes right out of the Bible. There it is, but it's taken out of context. If you want to know what it, to be saved in Jesus' day, this is it. Now, you tell me in the law, where does it say... Sell what you have, give to the poor, thou shalt have treasure in heaven, come and follow me, Jesus. That's not in the law. It doesn't tell you to sell all you have, but it does tell you to take care of the poor in the law. And take care of the poor in the law. I don't think there's anywhere it says treasures in heaven, they'll have treasures in the land. 
Come and follow me. That's Jesus. You will not say C in the law J E S U S. So, like I said, this dispensation of the time of John the Baptist to Jesus ascended to heaven, Acts chapter 1, and the transition to Acts chapter 9, the Ethiopian eunuch. This is the salvation in the time of Jesus. All but Judas, if they were to die, which no one died when Jesus was on this earth in the land, they would have they would have gone to heaven because they did give everything. They did sell it all. And they are following Jesus. But when the young man heard this saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Okay, so, let's move back up to 18, verse 18. Thou shalt do no murder. Okay, that's one of the big ten. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's another one of the big ten. Thou shalt not steal. That's another one of the great ten. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's not. That's another one of the great ten. Honor thy father and mother. Mother. That's another one of the great ten. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, that's in the law. Where's the idolatry? Whereas thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Where is coveting? Jesus did not mention coveting. Now, as far as the Jews, this is just taken for granted. They do not serve idols. They even had a coin of the of the Roman government of a picture of a face on it. They had a coin of the temple. No face. Because that, that's imagery. That's idolatry. You would have to go to the changer like Matthew saying, you know, here's my coins with faces on them and I want to exchange them for temple money. That was Matthew's job. And to collect taxes. So coveting, which is one of the big ten, Jesus says to him, will that be perfect? Go and sell what thou hast, give to the poor. But the young man, for 22, when he heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. The sin that bothered this man of the great Ten Commandments is coveting. I'm not giving up my money. So he wasn't so perfect. Job. He was self-righteous. Paul was, listen, you know, everything, I, I, that's done. Noah later, when he got off the ark, got drunk and naked. You see, you don't have to break all Ten Commandments. This is just one. He wanted to keep his riches. That's coveting. And that right there was his sin. And Jesus knew right where to nail him because Jesus did not state the coveting. Oh, good. He didn't kill anybody. All right. Now, we're not, we're not talking about... We're going to think, think you know, commit adultery, whether you looked at a woman or not. That's you didn't commit, you, you've been faithful. We don't know if he's married or not. But adultery could be premarital sex, too. Uh, I'm not going to say incest, um, fornication. Today they call it the movies, murder. Today they call it a, a series. Thou shalt not steal. Today we call it a great western movie. A great crime drama movie. And he didn't do that. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Now you go read what Paul. Paul said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. It does look like Paul. 
But this gentleman, whoever he is, Jesus did not name his sin. And this is Adam, where art thou? Where are you? Did you eat of the tree that this young man, if he is so perfect in the law, well, how come he didn't speak and say, well, I do have one problem, Jesus. What's that? I love my money. You see, that guy got to the point. This young man said, all these things have I kept from my youth up. He was not thinking about his sin. And what we need to do as Christians, now I can't kneel and pray anymore. But when you go and kneel before God, you sit before God, you stand before God, whatever you do, when you come to the Lord in prayer, you've got to realize there's one thing you must do. And many of you would be afraid to do it. I do it all the time. You must get down before the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. You name off the sins you know. And then you say to the Lord, Lord, any sins that I have committed, that I am unaware or I forgot to mention, who well, I'm telling you, I am telling you, it may take 20, 30 years, if the Lord is decent with you in life, it may be it may be thirty years, and the Lord comes knock on your on your door. He says, "How's that crop you just picked?" Oh, Lord, I was, only, I was I was seventeen then. I don't care. You have got to come to God. You have got to seek God and say, "Lord." And you know, we say, what sins are you talking about? And, you know, our sins are thrown from as far as the east is from the west. Okay, that's good and great. It's true. But what about the sins you have not confessed? This man has never confessed his sin of coveting. And if this is, and this guy is not Paul. He's an he's an ordinary Jew. In the time of the gospel of Jesus. But when a young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful. We had great possession. As far as you know, like that, that man, if it's not Paul, because of coveting, everything else is great. The record's great for everything. Coveting, he's in hell. And God told him what his sin was. You see, that's the problem with Christians. God will say the sins that you don't do. I don't know how many times I had somebody in, in, in a public street ministry. Well, I didn't kill anybody. I've had men in prison for murder. Tell me, I didn't kill anybody. Like, I know you did. <laughs> Reliable resources. Oh, you know, I, I let my light shine. Okay, yeah. Let's see how God thinks about your light. You have got to come to God in prayer and say, God, where are you displeased in my life? Where are my sins that I don't know, my sins I have not confessed? And many Christians would be afraid to pray such a prayer because you would get up and walk away sorrowful because you had great many sins that you didn't know. And I'm telling you, listen men, listen men, Matthew 5, 28, men, listen to me. So look upon a woman, lest after his heart is committing adultery with her. All right, you're just thinking about it. You think about, hey, you know, I wonder how much it would, what it would take to knock that bank off. You're thinking about it. Oh, one of these, I'm going to kill him. You're thinking about it. Oh, my football team, all oh, my baseball team. I'm going to get in the team colors. Idolatry.
Oh, I does, baby. Look at that. I wish we got killed. My baby means I wish I had a pit. You're breaking the wall. Honor thy father and mother. Paul quotes that in Ephesians. You're watching that television commercial. Ooh, I wish I had one of them donuts. Coveting. And listen, I'm telling you, I work for a donut place, big chain donut place. I would have people come out to me at 10 o'clock at night. They, I just saw this. I had to have it on television. Coveting. I can't wait till I get my check. I got to go get that burger. Or I got to go get that meal. <laughs> Coveting. That's his sin. Oh, I wish I had a wife or family like Coveting. Oh, I wish I had a woman more like him. Coveting. I need to get a new job. I hate Coveting. I'm going to get me a boat and I'm going to go Coveting. Oh, I can't wait to take the children to, to the to the rat land. Coveting. I'm going to get on that big Ferris wheel and I'm going to ride that. Coveting. I had one guy tell me he never sinned. I, I went all around and got a little bit of a shouting act. I guarantee sometime he coveted. I guarantee sometime he looked upon a woman. All have sinned and come to the shore of glory. God. This guy, if he's not Paul, most likely, what we're going to study tomorrow night, he died and went into hell. And is still in hell today. This would be somewhere around 28, 29, 30 AD. Almost 2,000 years. Because he was rich. He ain't rich now if he's in hell. The Bible speaks about another rich man that's in hell. We'll talk about that tomorrow night.